testimony. If she didn't run back to town, nobody would know. But she was no longer ashamed. She's no longer in fear that somebody was going to accuse her of being an adulteress. She didn't care anymore because she knew that Jesus forgave her. And he gave her a job to do. She told the, the townspeople, he told me everything I ever did. So when the Samaritans came to him, they urged Jesus to stay with them. And he stayed for two days. And because of his words, many more became believers. When we finally ask Jesus to stay with us, to come into us, he will. And then we hear his words and we become solid believers. Jesus did the harvesting, and here's what the townspeople said in verse 42. They said to the woman, we no longer believe just because of what you said. Not only because of what you said, but we got to start it. Now we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this man really is the Savior of the world. The townspeople had heard the message, had seeds planted. Now they heard the words right from Jesus, just like we came when we read the Bible. And now their faith has been strengthened, and then more and more people heard the message. When we become disciples and we start to invite people to worship, they can hear about Jesus themselves when they sit here or when they attend Bible study. And then they go from seeker to attender to member, and then they can make the decision, do they want to take the next step and become a disciple? What is your story? What is your testimony? We all have one. And we have to share it. Peter tells us in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15, he tells us, always, always, always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect. Because people, when people see us and we're not worried about COVID-19 or we're not worried about all the other stuff in the world, they want to know why. And that's when we can tell them, I'm not worried because I know where I'm headed. And we can give them our story. Here's one example of, of how easy it is to share your testimony. In 2016, when Christy and I lived in Wisconsin, we were going to register to vote. We were in a new township. And we both told our faith stories to, to two different people. After I told my story, the person I was speaking to told me that she was looking for a church for her and her three children. And then she started to attend New Hope Church. And then the woman that Christy was talking to, she told Christy about how her husband was saved on his deathbed and the impact that it had on her life. He was no longer afraid to die because he was saved. He knew where he was going. We knew in those 30 minutes that we had to share our story because of what Jesus tells us in verse 35. He tells us, Open your eyes and look at the fields. They're ripe for harvest. Sisters and brothers, with what's going on in the world right now, people are ready to hear the message. We just have to deliver it to them. There's so much uncertainty now. Am I going to catch this virus? Am I not? Am I going to be employed tomorrow? Am I not? Why is there still racial problems in 2020? Why is there so much anger between Democrats and Republicans? There's just a whole bunch of junk going on right now that only one person can solve. And it's up to us to deliver the message. The fields and towns around us are ripe for harvest. It's time for God's churches in Cambridge to mobilize for Jesus and finally deliver our message. Now, not all of us will become disciples, and that's okay. Because we don't do things to be saved. We're already saved. But the things that we do as disciples make our life for God so much richer. We're going to start our training as disciples on Sunday, July 12th at 8.30. We're going to start up a new Bible study. And we're going to go through a, a process of, of determining, here's what it means to be a disciple. Through scripture, <laughs> through prayer in different ways. And to find out the things that disciples do. July 12th, 8.30. Next week, we're going to hear about Peter's call to become a disciple. And we're going to follow Peter on his path over the next seven weeks. And we're going to see how he changed from a grubby fisherman into the man that the church was built on. Amen? Amen.
Please stay.